Hi there! I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be a book haul. The first one I've done in months, I think. What I'm going to go through now are the books that I picked up at the Word on the Street Festival. The Word on the Street is basically a chain of book festivals that happen across Canada. I went to the Toronto one. I did a vlog of that, which I'll link to below if you want to check it out. Um, I did use a sports camera for it, so if you're prone to motion sickness, you might want to skip it, but otherwise it might be entertaining. I picked up two books that I selected and also a grab bag, so I don't necessarily know what's inside there. So let's take a look. The first thing that I picked up was The Guide, which you might say that's not really a book, but it is long enough and has enough information and coupons that I am going to hold it up and share it with you, because if you were at the festival and you didn't pick this app, you're missing out on some discount codes and information on all of the speakers. So it was worth getting. I know at some of these events it's all advertising, but I thought this had decent information. So, Next up are two books that I picked up at the tent of Coach House Books, which is a publisher that is based out of Toronto. These two are both short pieces of nonfiction. The first one is by Jeet here, and it is In Love With Art. It's about Françoise Mully, who is Art Spiegelman's wife, but also an editor and an artist in her own right as well. What the author of this is looking at is her influence basically transforming comics and the way they're perceived and published. I'll read a bit of the back from you. I'll read a bit of the back for you. As an art editor of The New Yorker since 1993, she has remade the face of a venerable magazine with covers that capture political and social upheavals from a black-on-black -black cover after 9-11 to the Obama's pre-election fist bump. And now, with Toon Books, she's at the forefront of a new wave of comics making for children. This is based on exclusive interviews with both the subject and Spiegelman and a pantheon of comic artists. And it is apparently the first book written about her. So this should be interesting because I feel like I don't know enough about her. And uh, yeah, I figured this would be a way to remedy that. Next up, also from Coach House, is Nabin Ruthnam's Curry, Eating, Reading, and Race, which I believe is a look at the culture or the way curry shows up in pop culture and high culture and analyzing that. According to the back, it says, there is no such thing as an authentic curry, though everyone knows what curry tastes like. The defining characteristics of the Indian subcontinent's biggest cultural export are slippery at best. The term covers a vast array of dishes and so lends itself naturally to metaphor. In this provocative book, the author interrogates the weight of that metaphor. Beginning on the plate, where curry is a beguiling and vexing gastronomical entity, through devouring the bookshelf, honing in on what he calls curry books, trope-ridden memoirs and novels of the South Asian diaspora, written for both brown readers and western publishing markets. So. This is an argument to unburden not only curry, but brownness itself from what Salman Rushdie calls the imaginary homeland. And I love the combination of food and social issues. So I'm looking forward to that. Next up, we have the grab bag. This is from Cormorant Books, who are another Canadian publisher. They were doing a grab bag where you could get four books for five dollars, but you weren't allowed to open the bag and look at them. So I did pick one up on my way out, and I thought we'd take a look at this. Well, the first thing that we have here is a slightly dirty cover, which is not a great way to start. But this is Post-Communist Stories About Cities, Politics, and Desires by Stan Persky on the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. So let's see. It says, the author illuminates what some consider the final act of the Second World War, the end of the occupation by the Soviets of Germany, Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and the Baltic nations. And let's see, the author is a, a university philosophy lecturer in Vancouver, but is American originally. I haven't read enough history about places like Poland, so that could be interesting. Next up, we have Kevin Major, New Under the Sun, which is in better condition than that first one, so that's good. Let's see, this is... this I think is a novel.
Yeah, this is a novel, and it is about Newfoundlanders. I'll read from the back. It says, Shannon Carew has a camp... I can read. Has a complicated relationship with history. Born a Newfoundlander, she has spent years on the other side of the country in order to erase her past and set down new roots. But when an opportunity to work with Newfoundland and Labrador's archaeological sites appears, Shannon cannot resist and decides to return home. What awaits her is unexpected. Well, that could be interesting. I think I've only read one or two novels set in Newfoundland before, so that should be a good experience. And the cover's nice, so. Okay, next up, Witness to a City, David Miller's Toronto by David Miller. David Miller was mayor of Toronto a number of years ago in the early 2000s, right before I moved the first time. Yeah, he was elected in 2003. Okay, so what is this? Uh, okay, this is interesting. So it's not about him. It's apparently David Miller profiling random Torontonians. Um, and Jeff Davidson took photographs of them. Okay, so each chapter is a profile of an individual and accompanied by a photo. That, not a huge book, but could be interesting. And it is in better condition than the first one again, so that's good. Hopefully that first one being dirty was just a fluke. Okay, and here's the final one. This is The Man and the Woman, a novel by Helen McLean. That's another interesting cover. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. So this is set in the 1940s and is about a Canadian girl who goes to London to study art. While the elderly French artist whose work first ignited her passion for painting looks back on his career. And it looks like it follows the lives of those two characters in their oddly parallel paths. All right, that sounds interesting. It is not super long. And it was a finalist for the Commonwealth Writers' Prize in the Canada and Caribbean region section. All right, that could be fun. Again, this is one I've never heard of, but I'm curious about it. So that should be good. So those were the books. I definitely can't complain about those four for five dollars, even with the first one being a little dirty. I probably could have picked up more, but I didn't bring an extra bag as a way of stopping myself from doing too much shopping. So that was probably good. <laughs> Since right now everything I own is in storage basically, so I wouldn't have had anywhere to put them. I'm pretty pleased with that. If you went to Word on the Street or to any other recent book festival, did you pick up any grab bags and were you happy with them would be not my number one question. But I'd also love to hear about your experiences of other book festivals and which ones you've enjoyed or not enjoyed, which ones have exceeded your expectations or disappointed you. Yeah, that's it for now. Ciao.